Hello, welcome once again to the Wireless Church and I'm super excited again to come away with the foundational truths that we need to build our Christian life. These are foundational truths that you need to be able to skyrocket in your Christian work. Now, you cannot escape these kinds of knowledge in your Christian work. You cannot be able to marshal yourself as a high-ranking person in the Christian realm without knowing these things. So let's look at one of the, like I call them, the F1 knowledges in the kingdom of God that you need. Let's look at those stuff. Today we want to look at who is a Christian. The Christian has the life of God. The Christian has the life of God. Now look at that. In 1 John chapter 5, from verse 11 to 13, to 13, he says, and look at that very well in your Bible. First John chapter 5 from 11 to 13. He says, and this is the record. This is the testimony. This is the record that God has given us eternal life. I want you to mark that. John is writing and he's saying that I want you to bear record that is a concluded fact. Spiritually, it's been concluded that God has given us eternal life. Now, God is not trying to give us eternal life. He is not going to give us eternal life. He says, God has given us eternal life. All right? He says, and this life is in his son. He that has the son has this life. He that has not the son has not this life. Now, that's powerful. That's so powerful. He's saying that, look, God has already concluded that he has given us eternal life. This eternal life is deposited in his son. Isn't it interesting that Jesus Christ said, I am come that they might have life and have it what more abundantly. When we say life, what are we talking about? We are talking about the very life of God. This is the record that God has given us Zoe. The word Zoe is eternal life. The very life of God. That means that God has a life. You see, in the world that we live in, there is what we call the animal life. There is what we call the plant life. There is what we call the human life. Now, the plant life is how the plants are able to take sun rays, convert it through photosynthesis, and then give us oxygen, right? And give us oxygen, right? Now, most of these things we see in the plant kingdom is because of the way plants are, how they are able to grow, how they are able to bear fruit, how they are able to um, be planted in some seasons and grow. It's all about what? The plant life. Now, there is also an animal life. How animals are able to what? Stay on land and be able to walk on land, feed on leaves, the way they are able to move around, they are grazing. All of that, their gestation, all of that is based on their life. There is also how that fishes also live underwater, how they are able to swim underwater and do all sorts of things underwater. If you take that fish and you bring it on, on land, terrestrial land, it will die. If you take any terrestrial animal and you put it into the aquatic environment, it will die. Why? Because its life sustenance does not support that environment. It's the same thing when it comes to even human life. The way he, we human beings are able to behave the way we behave is called the human life. Now the Bible says God also has a life, a kind of life that makes him God. How that God is able to say a thing and it comes to pass. How that he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Those are all sustaining parts of his life. How that God can never, can never be disadvantaged in any situation. He is righteous, always right. He can never be wrong. That is part and parcel of his life how that God is who he is. It is part of his life. Now the Bible says now that God has now been able to give us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He says, he that has the son has this life. He that has not the son doesn't have this life. So it's pretty much so interesting that as Christians, we can begin to realize that we have the very life of God. We have the very life of God. He says, this life is in the Son. He that has the Son has this life. He that has not the Son doesn't have this life. So it's, it's an exciting news for all of us. You see, he says, we have it right now. Now, let's continue and see what he's talking about. He says, 
in verse 13. That's John writing. He says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. He says, That ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. That's powerful. That's powerful. He says that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know, that ye may become aware that ye have eternal life. Why is the man of God talking this way? He's writing this way and speaking this way because the believers that he was writing to at the time were behaving as though they did not know that they had eternal life. They didn't know that they had eternal life. So he had to write to remind them that I want you to believe. I want you to know, become aware. Let it become your present, our reality. Let it become your everyday consciousness that you have eternal life. And this life is not in heaven. This life is not seen anywhere else. This life is where is in his son. He says, he that has the son has this life. He that has not the son has not this life. That's powerful, brothers and sisters. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's awesome to know that we have eternal life and that we can function with the very life of God and that we can claim for ourselves what God claims for himself. The very life and nature of God has been deposited with us and this is the life that we have now. It's a present, our reality that every believer has today and can function with, that we have the very life and nature of God. We don't need to go to any place to have it. There are those who believe that when we get to heaven, then we will have the life of God. No. The Bible says that John was writing and said that I want you to know right now in the present time that you have eternal life. You are not now trying to get it. You have it right now. Hallelujah. That changes a lot of things about our lives. It changes the way we look at ourselves, changes the way the way we relate to ourselves, changes the way we relate with others. Why? Because we know that we have eternal life. Yes, and this is the record. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. Imagine what, what kind of people we would be if we begin to recognize that in every day of our life. Every day you wake up, you said, in the name of Jesus, I thank God that I have the life of God. I have the life of God in my spirit. I have the life of God in my soul. I have the life of God in my body. You begin to fellowship with God with that life. Can you imagine that? That becomes every aspect of your life. What you are thinking about is that you have the very life and nature of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this, this day, I want us to begin to begin to put that into the practice of our very lives, every aspect of our lives, we are beginning to recognize that what? We have the very life and nature of God. The very life and nature of God. He says, these things are right unto you, that ye may know that you have eternal life. Brothers and sisters, you have eternal life. Begin to put the life of God in you at work. Don't be living as though one who does not have eternal life. You have the very life of God inside of you right now. Hallelujah. It's such a blessing to come your way with this scripture for the day. And it's so much of a blessing. Thank you so much for spending time with us here on the Wireless Church. Kindly subscribe, like, and share this video with every person. Thank you so much for being a blessing and watching us. God bless. Thank you.